Starts as a spark between just two. Light your candles, the feeling's true. Then comes the dark, you push on through. Cause there's more to love than just loving you. And she's your lover, and he's your rock. You take adventures, you share your songs. So mid December, you cuddle up next to the fire with your new mugs. A year goes by. iOS 18 dropped a couple days ago, and for those people who have upgraded their phone to the latest version, you're probably wondering what changed, right? Because I'll be honest, apart from the control center, it's pretty much exactly the same. But that's why I'm here. I'm here to show you some of the, some of the new useful features of iOS 18. Despite Apple Intelligence not coming out on an iPhone yet, there's still a couple. Of, there still are a couple of good ones, which I'm gonna show you today. So stay till the end to learn all these new features. All right, so let's start with the lock screen. So all you have to do is just press and hold the lock screen, click on customize, lock screen. And now, and now you get these minus buttons where you can remove this button and you can add your own. And here you can choose from a whole list of different icons you can choose from. So if you want to use it to like um, open your voice memo, open your calculator, translator, you want to silence, silence your phone, you want to you open a shortcut. So you can do all that through your... A lock screen button so it's just really nice for apple to add it took a long time um personally i am going to leave it on a camera flash because i do use these buttons pretty often and i'm just really used to how it's um how it goes so yeah next would be customizing your home screen um and you can also lock apps with just a press of a button which is really cool so you know if you're like if you want to hide something from your girlfriend like you want to hide your your search history or you want to hide your your photos app you can do that with just a press of a button to keep your stuff safe and private so you can continue doing whatever it is you're doing, right? So let's say if you want to lock certain apps, like if you want to lock Telegram, all I have to do is just press and hold the app icon. And then there's, there's, and then there's going to be a button called Require Face ID. So all you have to do is click on that, Require Face ID, enter your password. And now every time you open the app, it's going to prompt you for a password or a face unlock. So, you know, if you want to hide your apps from certain people or, you know, let's say you want to hide certain text messages or you want to hide some photos and things like that, uh, you can you can definitely do that. So you can feel safer passing your phone to other people and you can continue your sussy adventures. No one's going to think twice about it. Um, so, yeah, it's very nice. So Apple has made customizing your home screen a lot more convenient. So obviously now you can um, re now you can rearrange the apps however you want it to be. Um, you know, Android has this for a long time now and, and finally came to Apple. Other than that, when you press and hold the app, you can actually add widgets from here. So let's see if I click on this button. It's going to transition into their own app widget that they have, which is really, really nice. And they even have like a really smooth animation to it. So if I press and hold it again and click on the app icon, it's going to move back to an app. So, you know, Apple is a sucker for animations. They make all their animations really smooth and this is no exception. So if the app that you're using does have a widget, so if you press and hold it and you click on the widget icon, it's just going to transition into, a, uh, into its own widget and then you can set it up however you want it to be. And you can also change the color of your app icons. So if you want to turn everything blue or purple to match your wallpaper, you could do that. But personally though, I would leave it on the default settings because if everything is like purple or blue, it's going to be a little bit harder to differentiate the different app icons. But, you know, if aesthetics are more important to you over, like, accessibility or, like, efficiency, then you can go ahead and do that. So, uh, you know, it's completely up to you. And now we're going to move on to probably one of the biggest changes in iOS 18. That's going to be the control center. So the first time I opened this control center, I was like, wait a minute, this looks a little bit different from what, I, from what I'm used to. You know, they add certain colors in here and the buttons are a little bit different size wise and things like that. But now you have full control over what you want to put here. Like there is a whole list room to choose from. So how do you customize? How do you add a, a list of buttons on here? So you press and hold and then you click on add controls and over here they've overkilled this like there are so many different buttons you can choose from and not only that they also support third-party apps so you know apps like instagram they have their own buttons for you to choose from and uh, i guess like over time as more developers get on they can kind of program their own apps they can program their own buttons to be added to the control center but for now, all, I, all we have is Instagram, is the third party one. But yeah, you know, everything you could ever dream of 
it's all in here. You can even add shortcuts, so which is really nice. So if you want to use your control center to open certain apps or play music or add notes or quick notes or Instagram cameras. So on default, this is what it looks like. So what I would recommend you to do is to put the mobile data and Bluetooth icon onto your control center. Because if you're going out a lot, you're gonna want an internet connection. And if you're listening to music, you're gonna turn on your Bluetooth anyways. So other than that, you can explore as much as you want and I'll leave the rest to your imagination. So other than that, the Photos app also got a new revamp. You know, when you open this, you're gonna be like, whoa, like what is going on here? This is so different from what I'm used to seeing. But that's because they changed the entire layout of this thing and they also added a bunch of really cool features on here. Honestly, most people wouldn't care too much about this, but there are two cool features that I would love to bring your attention to. One of it is wallpaper suggestions. I think that's really cool. So if you scroll down, they're gonna add like a bunch of different wallpaper suggestions, which is super, super cool. You know, like something like this, they can do it on their own. Not gonna lie, it does look super cool. This is actually taken on my iPhone, by the way. This looks pretty sick. Other than that, there's this thing called customize and reorder. So if you click on that, you can rearrange your photos app to however, however you want it to be. Um, so yeah, if you're not comfortable with how the layout is, you can change it back to the default layout that you're used to seeing. Um, so yeah, it's also very nice to have. And next we got the notes app. Personally, I don't really use this. I'm more of a notion type of guy. Um, because I do own a Windows PC and an Android phone, so I want to and Notion kind of just helps me to sync everything up. But for the few of you guys who like to use Apple Notes, there are some cool features like this Matt's thing. So you can just draw out like um, Matt's problems and they would solve it for you. So 2 plus 2 equals 2. They should probably put 4. Yeah, there it is. They'll put four and they even do it in like your handwriting format, which is super cool. And you can actually even do algebra equations or something stupid like that. So if I do something like, uh, if I do like y equals to four X and then insert graph and boom, they would draw it out for you. Just absolutely insane. Like that is, that is absurd. Or if I even do something like, um, if I do like X equals to five and y equals to two then two then if i do like two x plus y equals to solve 12. that is insane that is so freaking cool probably not that useful like i don't really see anyone using this um except for you know people in high school doing mats and something like that but yeah that is like absolutely insane it's such a cool feature and if you're lazy to type and you want to take down notes super super quickly if you're in a lecture or something like that then there is this new speech to text feature that's also really cool so all you have to do is just click on this button called um record audio and then you click on this little quotation button over here and you press the record button and if I talk, they would turn my speech into text and then I can use those texts and add it into my notes. So that's like really, really simple. Um, how accurate is it though? I'm not too sure, but it seems to be doing a pretty good job. So I'd say it's like a, it's a very nice feature to have, you know? So I just press the pause and then, and then all I have to do is just copy the whole thing. And then I could literally just like paste it. So over here, press and hold, paste, bam, just like that. So, you know, for the minority of you guys who do use um, Apple Notes, first of all, what the heck, man, you guys should definitely use Notion. Notion is so much better. But, you know, if you really want to use Apple Notes, there are some very cool and fun features for you to have. And, you know, sometimes you want to take, take down notes really simple. You don't have internet connection. This is the best way to go about it. And the final feature of iOS 18 that's already out today is this thing called Vocal Shortcuts. So if you click on that thing, and I press enable. So what's this gonna do is you can see this orange orange dot uh, lighting up. This means that your microphone is open. So, so what you can do now is you can use your voice as an action button. So you can program, um, so you can program um, words to open certain apps. So if I say something like open discord. Okay, it didn't work. I'm gonna try it again. Open discord. Open camera. There, it finally worked. It doesn't work half the time. And um, it's also gonna draw out a little, a lot more battery because your microphone is always open. And this has interference with your Bluetooth connection. So if you're listening to music and you have this feature on, um, your music is gonna cut out a lot of time. So you probably don't wanna use this right now. 
or ever so you want to turn this thing off so another thing you have is eye tracking this is also really cool but it also sucks ass just like vo just like voice shortcuts it doesn't work half the time it's super gimmicky and uh, it's not very accurate so you probably don't want to use this right now or ever so that is about it that's all the new features of ios 18 that's currently available um, some of them are pretty useful features. Most of them are kind of mid. You're, you're not probably, you're probably not gonna use them day to day. Uh, you know, but it's there. You know, if you want to use it, it's there. Um, yeah, hopefully Apple Intelligence comes out soon and it changes everything around. Because for now, it's a little bit mid. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. See you in the next one. Take care and peace.